attorney Tom Maloney for the remainder of the Curtis Pond Dam project. And did we have a second? A second. second. Oh, okay. Is he Thank the you. man who was here the last week? Or the last week? Correct. Do you need that spelled, or are you okay? No, I'll just from last okay. time. All right. For the remainder of the Curtis Pond Dam project. Yeah. Okay, Jamie's going to recuse herself from this vote, and I think we'll do a roll call on this one, and I'll just call it. So, Gabrielle, how do you vote? Yay. And I vote nay. <laughs> Yay. And I vote yes. Did you get that, Rose? Yeah, four and one extension? No, no. Jamie's, uh, yeah, Jamie's, uh, no, we had three yeses. No. And Anne voted no. Okay. And two voted no. Now I'll get it. Uh, I think you would sorry, record it as 3 1 1. <laughs> would you record an extension? Like an absence? 3 1 1? But I think in the, she, what, you record yeah, who voted and how each person who voted. Did what? Yeah. Okay? I am good. Thank you very much. <laughs> sort of. All right, now we will move on to additions or changes. Does anybody have any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, the only addition that I have, I guess, is the uh, consideration of the minutes that I circulated um, and put in the file uh, relative to the bargaining meeting. Um, All right. And so that would just be the addition of um, accepting the minutes from that meeting, which I think it would be appropriate for the whole group to do. I think future minutes could probably just be uh, accepted within the committee since it's already going to be in warm meetings. So, yeah. But I don't, I don't know. Right. I mean, in this situation, probably. I think for the first one. When accepting the minutes, yes. would the per people not at a meeting abstain since they weren't? No, I mean, yeah, I, guess. I think that's just a, a, a committee thing. I don't, I don't see oh, why we would vote. Yeah. I mean, it's so a, you guys can deal with that, yeah. I think. Okay. Well then, well, I'll just um, we should have, we'll just have to add it to the agenda, agenda. to the agenda for Thursday then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else to Is add? We need to write down. Mm. No. 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 Okay, good. Okay, I would like to add where we appoint officials um, to consider a liaison to the sheriff's department <coughs> when we get there. And I'll explain that a little bit when we get there. And I would also like to announce that yesterday, last night, I got a, um, an email from David Sheets, who is apply, applying on behalf of the Curtis Pond Dam Association and us for a certified local government program the, to, for, um, uh, it's, the total is $9,000 and I think half of it would be put in by them. Do you remember the numbers? Do you know? Not off the top of my head, but it's. Oh, I have the budget here somewhere. It is. The total is $9,000 to do an archeology span study for the Curtis Pond Dam. Um, they didn't break it out. Oh, here it is. We would get 9,000 from, um, from the state and Curtis Pond Dam would put in 9,000 and that would be for 18,000 to do the archeological study. I went ahead and signed it because it had to be in by five o'clock tonight <laughs> and I got it last night. And all this is is an application, but we can still refuse to accept the money if you guys don't want to. I guess what'll happen is we'll get the money and then we will have to sign a document saying we'll go forward with it. So it's not actually committing us to anything. I just wanted to tell you guys. And it's specifically to, to pay for the study, archaeology study that's required by the Army Corps of Engineers right. permit. And Scott has a question. You won't get the money from we, COG until it's all over and thoroughly wrapped up and reported. It's a reimbursement grant. Oh, OK. So Curtis Pond can probably deal with that and we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll get the money eventually. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, I'll take a motion to approve, the, or does anybody have any changes to the minutes of April 3rd? Okay, motion to accept. So moved. Second. 
Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Yes? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, town officials. Uh, every town official who is in a position agreed to re-up. Um, you've all got the list. And I'll, does anybody want to ask any questions or make any comments about that? Are all those folks currently living in town? Barbara, do you know the answer to that? I would have to see the list, but I mean, I, mean, I, I know I developed the list, but as far as I know, off the top of my head, without looking at it, everybody lives in town. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not for everything. like. You can be on the planning commission and not Sandra in the town. Ferber does not, who's on the list for going okay, to tax yeah, collector. Oh, yes, yeah, Sandra lives Jay in Copping, I don't know. Jay, Jay lives in Dallas. Everybody else does. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I'll take a motion to uh, reappoint all those officials on Barbara's list. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. A point person who would be the person who collects all the road complaints, all the traffic speeding complaints. So whether that would mean that this person would get reports from any of us who receive the complaints, the road crew if they receive complaints, and collect them all in one place and transmit them in one bunch to the sheriff. And we need to have such a person. And I would like to nominate Barbara. <laughs> To be the point person on that. <laughs> she asked if you would like to be the point person. <laughs> I would be happy to do that. We get the calls into the town office anyway, so it's a good starting point. All right. So I would accept a mo. Oh, does anybody else want to discuss that further? Any other nominations? <laughs> <laughs> So I would accept a motion to appoint Jan Olson as the Assistant Zoning Administrator and Barbara Butler as the liaison to the Sheriff's Department. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask Second. why you're doing it with one motion instead of two? For time <laughs> constraints? Is there a problem? <laughs> okay. Um, no. It's fine if you want to break it out, Rose. Um, do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Great. Aye. Okay. Now we have a new one. Um, we did appoint Jordan to the um, collective bargaining at, uh, team at the last meeting, but we didn't replace him. And I would like to move that Gabrielle be replaced as the liaison on the Curtis Pond Dam issue. And Gabrielle accepts? I would second that. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. You but I was just thinking, should I abstain on that? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think it matters. I got you all paranoid then. <laughs> Okay, um, the shed horses are currently boarded up in uh, no somewhere that we're not supposed to know about. Um, and the person who is boarding them had signed a contract with us, I'm sorry, with the former select board, and would feel more comfortable if we would re-sign the contract. The contract would not commit us to any longer than the horses stay there. Um, but it would just indicate that we intend to pay the bills. Um, and Anne, you are going up, you can do that. Um, I went up and met with three of them on Friday and yes, just uh, the person had asked because the last thing they signed was in May of 2022, saying for two weeks or possibly longer and it is now <laughs> April 2023. <laughs> Um, so it's just an extenuation of the, the current contract. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's some other things to talk down the road, but for right now, that was the, the important thing. She just wanted to have a current select board member and a fresh contract. 
Okay, so I'd like to move that we uh, authorize Ann Tulin to sign a, a new contract under this with the same conditions. That's all. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You all set then? You got what you need? Okay then, yes. Okay. And uh, one more quick thing. We have two Zoom accounts. As, I, as it's explained in the agenda, um, we really probably don't need two anymore because we don't have COVID restrictions anymore. And so the question is, should we authorize the, Jamie, right? You hold those accounts to renew one contract or two? <laughs> right, so we have been paying for two. Um, I think that it's very uncommon at this point for both to be in use at the same time. Um, and if that were to happen, myself and others have personal accounts that could be used for a meeting if need be. Um, and it's, I forget off the top of my head how much it was. Do you remember? It was a couple hundred bucks, 250 bucks or so um, per account. I did renew the select board one because it was expiring and um, we needed it for a, a meeting immediately. Um, I haven't renewed the other one yet. So all you need is a, to know whether or not we should renew the yeah. second one. Yeah. And I don't know if it needs to be Probably doesn't a need vote. to be a motion. I just wanted to you guys all okay? get your all input. Jamie. How quickly could we get a second one if we needed it? Probably. Immediately. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Immediate okay. thing. Yeah. You're fine. Everybody yeah. fine with that? Um, and I will talk to Cliff again and make sure he doesn't, because he's, Cliff Emmons has been administrating them um, since we opened them at the beginning of COVID. So I'll check, I meant to check in with him today and I lost, ran out of time. But I'll just make sure he doesn't have some dramatic reason why it's important to have both of them. Okay. Um, with the way that we've structured, I'll confirm this tomorrow because I'm going to be talking with RB again. But uh, the way that we've structured the um, the Microsoft 365 accounts, uh, like the office staff and some of the other like heavy usage committee members would would probably have access to Teams um, through those accounts. So mm -hmm. that would probably alleviate. Like the for like the planning commission, the listers, they would they would likely have access to to teams um, through through uh, Office three sixty five, um, and so that would likely alleviate a lot of need for Zoom outside. You know, with the exception of the other like subcommittees um, that wouldn't have as robust accounts or accounts at all. So. Um, just do, when you hear me do that, it means this computer's stupid. <laughs> you know, I'm typing and all of a sudden it goes to a different line. Mm. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm down here, not over there. So. Okay. So, Rose, I think the minutes can just reflect that we all agreed that Jane yeah, was in agreement. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, we're now to the public comment portion. Would anybody like to make a comment? Tegan. Uh, I heard from Barbara that you all were interested in cybersecurity and us getting more training. I will be in Waterbury next week for two days doing a training. So if you all have any specific questions or concerns that you want me to make sure I find out about or ask about, just let me know before next Tuesday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions for Tegan? Okay. You all know how to get her if you have further questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just so you're in Waterbury, is it like a VLCT cybersecurity training? Uh, so it's actually a firm out of Texas that's doing it. It's the one that you sent to Barbara, I was told. Okay. Um, and it's it's two full days. It seems pretty intense, so I, I'm sure I'll get a lot out of it and take a lot of notes. I guess the one thing I would be on the lookout for is um, tools that you can easily convey to the myriad of volunteers that you know staff or volunteer for all of these committees. All these, that are um, some of them are going to have um, new addresses and uh, and just. The connection between even their personal email and how it can, you know, affect town business if there's a nexus between their personal emails and 
Um, I mean, like, I don't know all the ins and outs of how people get hacked, but I know it can happen to anybody anytime if they click on the wrong thing. So just like that's, I think, the importance of um, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're going to do that. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. So just like how you can convey that knowledge easily to all the people who have an access with the town. Or not all of them, but you know what I mean. Scott right. has something. I have a burning question. <laughs> How's the mud on Moscow Woods Road? It's not bad. Good. It's not good. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I didn't bottom out. As, as mud goes, it's real good. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the it'll, it'll get better. One of the town girls spin. Most of the morning, morning, stuck in front of my house. Yeah. They, yeah. they chained two graders together oh my God. to pull them out. Yeah. I know that spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I th it's time to call Sandra now. Um, can somebody work the phone? I have the yeah. number here. I got it right here. Do you have her number? I do. I've oh, got it right whoa. here. Oh, All right, thanks, Barbara. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the mud's really bad right here right now. You're, you're glad you're not coming till next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's mud season. It's what we get. <laughs> oh, Charlotte, yes? Um, I'd just like to say hi to Sandra, and I'm really glad she's back with us. Sandra, this is Charlotte Bassett. Hi, Sarah. I recognize your voice. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, Sandra, this is mostly your show. You have a copy of the agenda, so why don't you start taking us through this? All right. I'd be very happy to. Um, I would like to take up uh, delinquent taxes. Can everyone hear me? Yep, yep. The question was, can everyone hear? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm just asking if everyone can hear me. No one said no, so I guess so. Unless they could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to talk about delinquent taxes at this time. Uh, we have the delinquent tax report, and we have collected close to $170,000 of delinquent taxes. More, there are delinquent taxes in the vault right now. I'd like to draw your particular attention to four parcels. The parcels are in alphabetical order by last name. There's Harris, um, pardon me, Maza, Rogers, and Waiter. All four of these parcels have outstanding balances in both tax years 2021 and 2022. And just to get you oriented, 2022 are the tax bills that we all just paid. Um, the practice of the town palace for the past several years has been this. We um, provide the opportunity for delinquent taxpayers at the close of the tax effort to enter into an agreement providing uh, that uh, providing for equal payments that would pay their taxes penalty and interest in full by June 15th. Uh, the uh, end of the fiscal year, right? Our fiscal year ends on June 30th. So, if we're talking, for example, the 2022 tax effort ended in, uh, no, for all intents and purposes, November 15th, plus the uh, grace period. So, folks who are delinquent would get the required statutory notice 
advising them that they are delinquent. They also get an agreement that says we would like to stay in full, but as long as you say by June 15th, uh, that will work. And, um, and that works for many, many, many people. We have several agreements on board. And then many people just pay in full as their tax return um, and the uh, tax refund checks come in or other uh, funds that they're expecting uh, to come in over the course of those few months. These four taxpayers that I've uh, brought your attention to have not paid, have not made any payments uh, for their 2021 taxes or 2022 taxes. So that's the first thing we look at. Have they made any payments? Do they have an agreement? Uh, there is no agreement for all. Uh, no, uh, none of these parcels are under a payment agreement. The second thing we look at is whether or not there has been any communication. Uh, and again, there's been no communication uh, by any of the parcel owners or their agents uh, regarding these taxes. So uh, the third prong of the question is how, uh, are they current with the current year's taxes? And in this, in this case, in these four cases, that would be 2022, and they are not. So when those three conditions are met, it has been the practice of the prior select board and all the various iterations to uh, send the parcel to the tax collection uh, attorney. And, and it, that is Gloria Rice and Montpelier. And she takes it from there. The consequence to the parcel owner is that once this happens, they are no longer able to arrange a payment plan with a delinquent tax collector or select board and attorney fees and other costs of the tax sale are incurred, uh, primarily um, publication in newspapers of record. So uh, what I'm going to ask the board tonight to do is to make a motion, uh, moving to make a motion to send all uh, three of these four parcels to um, collection. Uh, the fourth parcel is the Harris parcel. He contacted me today, and the arrangement that he made was this. He uh, brought cash to the town office today in the amount of $600 to show the board that he is serious. And he will pay the balance on or before June 14th. In his case, I would like the board to motion that he will be sent to, uh, that his parcel will be sent to, uh, for collection to the tax sale attorney uh, unless he complies with the uh, agreement that he has made. And um, I can give you that word if you would like it. That needs to be a little bit specific because you, you don't want to come back and revisit this if he fails to meet his um, prompt. So that's the first piece of business, uh, and that is to get these items scheduled for tax sale. This is all we have for 2021, so we're doing very well there. Depending on the statutory time requirements for notice and certified mail, uh, we may or may not end up uh, as in a sale situation before June 30th. Typically, I would bring this before the board a little bit earlier in the year than this, but because the board is brand new and there were so many other things for you folks to look at, and for the exiting board, 
uh, that they were looking at that I'm bringing it now. I thought this was the first sensible opportunity to uh, present this. The town has a very long winded dealing with tax policy. I believe you folks, all of you have it uh, as a PDF up on your screen. I propose that we shorten that and that you give me the authorization to rewrite that and to set forth our very simple practice, which is no payment, no communication, two years in a row, delinquent, you go to tax sale. Um, and, that, and that's what we've done. It's a very successful process. The town uh, experienced a lot of delinquent or lingering delinquent taxes for several years, um, but I think that this is a humane and dignified way to get the town's taxes collected, and it's also very effective. Everybody knows where they stand. Everyone has an opportunity to, um, to get their taxes paid in a way that they can match. So that, that is one piece of action. Uh, that I am hoping that we can, uh, that the board can get to today. So, Sandra, let's stop then and, and see if we can get those two pieces of business taken care of. Would, would you just repeat the, the first motion you would need is to um, authorize you to send the delinquent tax parcels of Maza, Rogers, and Waiter to the town attorney for collection, or just to the town attorney, is that right? Uh, to the town attorney for collection. For yeah. collection. But, um, Rose, did you get that? Yeah, except not the names, but maybe you could just email Maza, them. Maza, is that M-A-Z-Z-A? Yes. Yeah, Rogers. Yes. And With wait. a D-R-O-D-G-E or R-O-G-E-R-S? Yeah. -E R-O-G-E-R-S. Okay. And waiter, W-A-I-T. E R. Is that right? Yes. E R. Gotcha. Okay. Does, yeah. Go ahead. Senator. Oh. Who, who's going to make that motion? Well, we haven't made it yet. Uh, <laughs> no, Sandra. This is Ann. I was hoping to ask just a couple questions. Quick. That's okay. Can you Not hear me? Yet. Okay. So with Mr. Mazza, he passed in 2020. I don't know how much extended family he has. Do you have like a connection to whoever is dealing with his estate? Yeah, John Harmon has uh, been in contact with us for a few years okay. and has suddenly stopped contacting us. Okay. Uh, by that I mean the town office. She was always very pleasant and nice to deal with, uh, but we have heard nothing from her for the past two years. Okay. And no payment. So I don't know if she has stepped away from administering the estate. I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay. Uh, but the mail that we send to her attention in this regard is not returned. Okay. Um, and then my other one, Mr. Rogers, is he the gentleman who's home burned? I'm so sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Oh, Mr. Rogers, the other person that she wanted to send off, is he the one who had the fire? Um, that is that a different Rogers? It might be a different person. A different okay, Rogers. just think it. Uh, Mr. Rogers is also uh, deceased, and okay. this is his surviving widow. Uh, there were many pieces of property in the estate. This clearly is something very small. Yeah. That, um, so we just hope that she gets these taxes paid. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, it's a small amount. You know. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Sandra? All right. So um, we all do. We all understand. Actually, would somebody like to make that motion first? We're, we're moving that those three parcels be sent to for collection. We be sent to the town attorney for collection. Mm -hmm. Can I just clarify? <clears throat> it's the town's ta tax collection attorney. It's not the town attorney. Thank you. The yeah, it's not the town attorney. Rose, you guys deal with it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So her name's Gloria Rice, and she lives here in Calais. Yeah. Uh, so moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion on that one? We all understand the motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Got it, Sorry. Rose? Now I'm going to put it in the right place. <laughs> okay. I, Go ahead, no question. Does the town have to advertise in a paper of record that those, uh, that those tax sales are happening? Is that one of the next things that happens after this step? The uh, uh, Gloria Rice is the attorney who will be handling those collections and the actual tax sales of all of the advertising. He will take it from here. It's um, a, a highly regulated process, and uh, she knows it like the back of her hand. She's done it for the town and other towns for years. And they're not going to immediate tax sale. She's going to try to collect first before yeah. they go to tax sale. Okay. There are several, it, it would take about three months before a tax sale can happen. All right, now we need a motion to, um, to send the property of Harris to tax collection unless he complies with the schedule that he set up. And Barbara wants to say something. Yeah, so this was gonna get a little complicated, so I asked Sandra to actually write the motion out for you. Excellent. It changed a little bit because at the time that she made this agreement with Mr. Harris, he was gonna bring $530 cash to the town office today, he brought 600 cash. So there's your motion. Oh, this should all be part of the motion. Okay, I will read it then. The Harris <clears throat> parcel number 212600 shall be sent to Gloria Rice Esquire for collection unless full payment of the 2021 and 2022 property taxes, interest, and penalty are made as follows. $600 cash brought to the town office on or before 4 p.m. on Monday, April 17th, 2023, and the balance currently $615.83, subject to additional interest of 5% each month or part of a month, is paid on or before June 15th, 2023. Uh, no but th that would be the end of the motion, I think. No, we? keep going. Okay, <laughs> no further motion will be required of the select board if the parcel owner does not make the payments as set forth. Please pass this to Rose. Can I keep that paper? Yes, of course. All right, any discussion on that motion? Well, that hasn't been made yet. Would somebody yeah. like to make the motion, please? So moved. Would somebody like to second? Second. No. Any discussion on that motion? Do we all understand it? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. And the third one is to authorize Sandra to rewrite the delinquent tax policy as she described. Did, is that right, Sandra? In other words, you're going to rewrite it to um, make it more succinct. Yes. And of course, the board would uh, review and edit the draft as they saw fit. I would provide a draft to the board for that purpose. So we're asking Sandra to rewrite it and bring a draft to us for review. All right, Rose? I don't know that we even need a motion on that one. She's an employee, so <laughs> we can just direct her. Does everybody feel comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. So you got them all, Sandra. Are you? Right. <laughs> I, I want to bring to the board's attention a uh, thorny issue. Um, we, or the town, hold escrow funds on behalf of the Robinsons. There was a tax sale a couple of years ago of the Robinson parcel. It has since sold at least once, maybe twice since then. We continue to hold the escrow money uh, until we receive an agreement between the parties in interest 
to that property uh, determining how those monies are to be distributed. There's about $40,000 plus in a holding account. It's also bearing interest uh, for the Robinson. Uh, not to belabor the situation, the uh, legal, uh, the person with a legal interest is the daughter. The father owns the equitable interest as the life tenant. So there are interests, uh, competing interests for this particular cash of money. Uh, Gloria Rice has instructed the town, and I'm now instructing this board, that that money may not be released until she submits to us a fully executed agreement between the uh, parties of interest. So you just need to put that in the back of your uh, head and, and understand that there is some money that we cannot release. Uh, with regard to the tax sale. Okay, thank you. We'll certainly come back to you if that happens, if somebody requests yeah. us to do that. Where would that right. request I, be coming from? Are there any questions? Well, yeah, about Jordan just asked one, Sandra. Would you repeat, Jordan? I was just trying to follow all of that, Sandra. I guess where would that request be coming from? Is there is there anything to do about that at for this the point? Money? Yeah. Well, for instance, Mr. Robinson may call the town office and ask them for the money, and the town office would need to refer him to Gloria Rust. We would not, the town office would not engage in a discussion with him about that. So Gloria Rice uh, would navigate that legal agreement should one ever be executed. I, I see Tegan taking notes. She got it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on that one? We ready to move on to the audit part, Sandra? So the audit, your uh, FY22 audit is an outlier, of course. Uh, one of the aspects of it um, that you have not, that the town has not seen in recent years is that your internal control were not in place in terms of best practices. And that is because uh, Nimric used to do, or still does, our checkbook reconciliation, but they were also consultants and writing checks. And that is a conflict. And that was not resolved before the July 2022 audit. So that's your big um, black mark, so to speak, in that audit that has to be corrected, and it is as of this point in time. They continue to do our reconciliation. That's uh, what the auditors and the office uh, worked out. And in a small town, it's very difficult to get a uh, good um, internal control procedure in place because of the limited personnel. So they will continue to do our bank reconciliations. Um, I will present your financial report, uh, but a reconciliation is they balance the checkbook. That's what they will do. They will no longer be writing checks except payroll checks at this point in time. And that does not, uh, that should not and does not conflict them. So uh, this year's audit we was not scheduled. Uh, oh, was there a question? Sorry. The questions on that one? No. No, we're fine, Sandra. Okay. Uh, the audit for FY 
23, which is the fiscal year that we are about to close, and that would be on June 30th, was not scheduled. However, I was able to reach out to Sullivan and Towers. They did have two days available for us in July to complete the audit. Typically, uh, we have, uh, the select board has entered into uh, a three-year contract, which gives uh, the town a discount for uh, the consecutive audits. And uh, Rick Powers, one of the principals at Sullivan and Powers, is going to uh, get and uh, a contract over to the town. And I imagine you will have that by your next board meeting on the 24th. Now, there is a difference between, uh, on your budget, you will see a line item for professional audit, and that is an annual audit done by a CPA firm. And it has in the past been done by Southern Towers. We will see a line item for town audit, and that is the uh, reconciliation services that Nimrick performs as a consultant. And they do this in lieu of elected town auditors. Uh, it is uh, the elected town auditors really didn't come in and reconcile the checkbook or do any checks and balances with regard to um, the accounts that the town held. So we went this route some years ago. Uh, then if we talk about the possibility of a single audit. And a single audit is neither one or the other of those two things. It's a federally required and regulated audit that is triggered when a town expenses $750,000 or more in federal grant money. Uh, it, we're, with ARPA funds, and uh, if all of the East Calus money were expensed this year, we come within sight range of that amount of money. Uh, Jeff Cantor and I have talked about it, and it appears that he is able to push off the last uh, distribution from that B from that BDCP grant to uh, early July, July one, or you know, uh, to pull it out of this fiscal year. So uh, those audits are very expensive. They're very time consuming. You have to go out to bid um, to find an auditor. You can't use your uh, the auditors that do your regular uh, professional audits. And uh, there's the possibility for reimbursement is a fraction of the cost of the audit. So. Uh, Jeff and I are working closely to do our best to avoid that, and I think we will. So if you see those words being thrown around in any of the meetings you're in, single audit, it, 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 does, it is a, a meaningful phrase, and that's what it's all about. I don't believe that the town is going to have to face that. If it will, I'll let you know, but at this point in time, if that it does not uh, look uh, foreseeable. You're talking about for this fiscal year, right? Yes, yeah. $150,000 in any fiscal year, and yep. this is the fiscal year question that we're right. keeping a close eye on. Um, another reason we're you know, keeping a close eye on it and playing it close to the best is that we do have some highway grant expenditures that will come up before the end of the fiscal year. That's very typical. Um, they start their road work as soon as the roads are dry. One and two, uh, during this fiscal year, various expenses and revenues that were uh, grant, highway grant uh, expenses or revenues 
were misposted. Toby and I spent a couple of hours going line by line, expense by expense, revenue by revenue on the uh, grant, highway grants that have been active in this fiscal year. We have found where those items uh, are and we know where they need to be moved. So um, when I would say the highway grant situation is uh, is under control. We've identified uh, all of, of the expenses and revenues, and we just need to book them properly. Wow. So uh, that's where we are with the single audit and the audit is, and the audit in general. So questions for Sandra on this audit? Sorry, Sandra, were you is it, were you ready for questions? Oh, sure. Okay. Did you say it was $250,000 of money? 750. 750,000. Okay. And did everybody understand that? I'm not sure everybody's hearing everything. It's, it's the uh, community, the East Calais Community Trust grant that's getting us so close this year. And, and Jeff, who's doing the work on that, is able to split it and punch, push a bunch into next fiscal year. So that we don't get to the seven fifty thousand dollar cap. But isn't the trust a nonprofit that is not the town? That's correct, but they're getting the grants. We actually have the grants, and we subgrant to them because the grants will only go to um, municipality. A municipality. Yeah. Okay. Um, Scott has a question or a statement. No, just who would do the single audit? Would it could could it be our our guys, or do they send in some bids? She said you have to go to bid. We get the we get to pick the auditors, uh, but we have to go through a bidding pro a federal bidding process to before we can hire them. Great, thanks. Everybody set on the audit piece, and we obviously cannot sign the contract tonight because we didn't get it. So we'll put that on the next agenda because it sh it'll be ready by next Monday, Sandra. Uh, uh, yes, I will send a tickle out, a reminder out to Rick to get that okay. contract out to the board. Okay. All right. Next. All right, let's see. Where are we here? We're at current financial situation, the budget all right. and all well, that. Well, so, it that bad. <laughs> no time for nail bite. Okay. No time for nail bites, so that's the good news. Um, you want us to all pull out the Town of Callis, Vermont Financial Reports document? Yeah, and start with uh, page two, which is, uh, is the balance sheet. Um, I have one copy here. If you guys want to look at it, I can sort of look at Gabrielle's. Is it online anywhere? Uh, Sandra, it's not really online, is it? It's only in our it's emails. It's on the website. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, Sorry. You just, just sent it this morning. That's Scott Share. Yeah. <laughs> Pass it back there. Oh, okay. Oh, Charlotte wants to look at it. Okay. Let me see. Yes. Okay, I think we're ready, Sandra. All right, I am going to um, do my best to use the same language that you have heard in a previous presentation. <coughs> so you see your assets. There are uh, several of them, checking, HRA checking, the Robinson tax sale, and the due to from category. You will notice that all of uh, the first three are positive numbers and the last number is a negative number. The due to, due from number represents other uh, claims to meet money in the checking account. So for instance, there is money in the town hall reserve account. There is money in the town office reserve account. There is money in the record preservation account. 
These are reserve accounts established for particular purposes. They are uh, pooled with the operating money of the town. And this is a, a, the best practice for a municipality rather than to have many, many little accounts to take care of. You get the better interest rate. These monies are protected uh, by the use of a sweep account. And what you see is a net asset of the town of, let's see, that's $800,000. 800000 or is that $600,000 plus? And against that, we have some liabilities outstanding. So we, again, we see your uh, tax sales, right? Uh, above, up in the asset line, they are aggregated, and in the liability line, they are separated. So you see that Robinson escrow account, and you also see uh, the Jordan tax sale account. Actually, that is a real tax sale, and that uh, we could talk about that another time. But that that property will go to the bidder in June. You have uh, some payroll taxes that uh, <coughs> you won't see this number in April. Evidently, there was an overpayment of payroll taxes, and that is already. Uh, been refunded by the IRS and is, will be uh, in the first couple of deposits in April, and that, that number will go to zero. We have a number of prepaid taxes where folks have uh, already sent money in towards their 2023 tax obligation. We, uh, the town office is in the process or actually at the end of the process of selling dog licenses. And uh, we will be sending money to the state to pay the state its share of the fee. And so that number will go down significantly or go to zero by uh, your next report. Same thing with your marriage uh, line. So these are all, all liabilities and they are Added up. So what you have next is the amount of general fund balance, and that's five hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars plus. And that is what was rolled over from uh, the prior fiscal year. So it's not just one year, but that is a rollover, uh, of a combined rollover of several years. And uh, the fund balance that we see, uh, you'll, you'll see it's reduced by $36,000. That is the result of our revenue in the general fund side being less than expenses today by $36,000. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get to the actual uh, budget line. So what we had, uh, the total fund balance at this point in time is $488,000 to the good. And so what does that mean? You're, you're going to see, it's, it's purely mathematics that uh, our, that the expenditure between now and June 30th will be greater than was budgeted. And I think uh, the board, saw uh, that in February, when, or rather in March, uh, when they met with uh, Wendy Wilton. Uh, and that $36,000 is going to grow somewhat. Now, you're going to collect more delinquent taxes, but there's not too much more money that's going to come in. So that $36,000 uh, $36, will grow. But it will certainly not grow to the to the extent of four hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars. So the town, as I said, this is not time for nail biting. The town is in good fiscal condition, uh, and you're going to proceed on that footing. Okay? Any questions there? 
Uh, Scott. <laughs> can you, Sandra, this is Scott Massage. Can, can you see in a nutshell how that uh, uh, original 521 is calculated? Yeah, so over the, you know, Scott did a just be blunt about it. When I first came to the town, the town had a deficit of roughly $280,000, which was reduced. It had to be reduced for, or uh, removed <coughs> by fall. A, a debt of rather, a loan was taken out, we paid it off, or we're about to pay it off to reduce that debt to bring the balance sheet to zero. And since that time, expenses and revenue have generated that $521,000. So over time, over the through four years, I guess, that I've been here and watching that number, one year was 100,000, one year was 150,000. Not uh, not all expenses came to pass, or we had more revenues than anticipated. Some of those revenues were COVID-related revenues. So uh, this is how that was built up over over the past four years. And that's exclusive of the highway fund. Yes, sir. Thanks. Other questions? Nope. No, don't see any, Sandra. All right. So we're going to go to the next one, two, three, four, five pages. On the sixth page, at, there's a really great summary at the bottom. What does it say there at the top of the page, the, Sandra? The budget line, that's the leftmost numeric line. Sa Look. Sandra, can you yeah. just say what it says at the top of the page? We're ha some, some of us are having trouble finding it. Oh, sure. It says uh, current year period nine, budget status report <coughs> six. Okay, so that's page five of six. Six of six. Six of six. Wait. Current. The one that starts CV, home health, and hospice, Sandra? Page, uh, what was that again, please? It starts CV, home health, and hospice <clears throat> on top. Yes. It starts out with that line. So it's the next page. So it's page six of six. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Everybody there? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this is a great summary of where you are exactly in your budget. At, at the bottom, you'll see the word total expenditure. And the leftmost column under budget says uh, $980,000. $111, right? So that was uh, the budgeted expenses for FY23. And thus far, you spent $899 and $237 and $87. So you are at, oh, this print is so small. You are at 93 <laughs> roughly percent of your budget, but you see you're only in the uh, you're only at in period nine or at 75 percent of the year so expenditures are higher than you would expect at this time of year even even though in a municipal budget you do not have the same expenses from month to month it's not uh, similar to a household budget, we have various loans that are paid throughout the year. Uh, they're not spread out over 12 equal payments, but are and one-time annual payments for the length of the loan. We pay our social service agencies. Uh, once we collect taxes, that happens in December. So those are two examples of how a municipal budget 
is different than a home budget where you typically have the same expenditures, hopefully, month after month. But what we look at is the percentage of expenditures at the end of a quarter or, or at the end of any given month. So you can see that our expenditures at the end of March are, are pretty far into your budget. Now, you would also see that your revenues, your revenues are actually ahead of by a little bit of where you might expect them to be at this time of year, but not enough to offset year-to-date expenditures. So that's where that uh, $36,000 comes in. If you take the total revenues that we have received to date and subtract the total expenditures expense to date, the negative is $36,000. And as I said, that is going to go up. You're going to get some more revenues in, but you have another quarter of expenses. However, you have a very, very healthy fund balance on the general fund side that will be able to absorb that, that, uh, that expense picture. And it will not put the town in any financial uh, uh, danger. There are budget lines that exceed, <laughs> there are budget lines that vastly exceeded what they were budgeted. And the board, that, that has been brought to the board's attention. And I'm sure the board is looking at them closely um, to, to monitor them as we go forward to the rest of the year. Most all lines are within uh, the budget, but there are a few that are uh, that are top heavy at this time. Uh, any questions on that or how that might work? Anybody? Does anybody want to know? Do we all know which ones are over budget and which ones no, we should be watching? Yeah, uh, I think we should review those. Yeah, would, would you be able to tell us what, what those line items are where we're over budget, Sandra? Yes, yeah, you're, um, hang on. One of the most significant overages is uh, legal fees, budgeted at 10000 it's at $88,000 to date. Um, yeah, on that page. You have uh, your contract line budgeted at $8,400, and it is at $57,000 to date. And that is offset by the fact that you have no treasurer salary and related expenses. So did while you, that did, line is over budget, you there, there's no salary on the other end of that. I'm just looking to see where that salary line is. Town Treasurer, yes, that's a zero. Did you say it was budgeted at four hundred? At, at eighty four hundred. Eighty four hundred. So that covers uh, that covers uh, the, the ordinary reconciliation that members would do on a month-to-month -month basis that we have contracted with them for the past several years. It covers their payroll services and also the consulting services that they provided um, to run uh, accounts payable to basically you know keep the town going while. A treasurer was um, what well, well, the board was looking for a treasurer. Let me see what other lines really jump out. Advertising Ad jumps out. I am told that is advertising for the treasurer's position. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the DPW. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm just saying, I hope it's somebody else. 
So uh, that line jumps out. <laughs> now, what about when you look at these, it, in, in the, you know, the 20,000 foot view of these expense lines, it, 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 you have to keep in mind that ho hopefully these lines are going to repeat themselves in FY24, that we're not going to see these same um, weight on the budget in FY24 as you see in FY23. So that, you know, that's what we're hoping for. Let me see what else we have here that stands out. Um, I, th I think Jamie has a question, Sandra. One that stands out to me is uh, insurance, which was way over on all three. Let me find that line, Jamie. Page five of six on the oh, ledger. Thank you. Uh, here we go. Huh, my guess is, hang on, that insurance line needed to be broken up, and my guess, and I'm going to check on that right now, my guess is that $21,000 belongs part to general fund and part to highway. So I'm going to take a quick look at highway and see if insurance was posted there. No, only $2,700 was posted to highway, and that's highly irregular, so that is a gen, so I, I would need to go back in between now and the end of the year and post, repost that amount so that it is properly prorated between the two departments. And I would say that's the same with workers' comp as well. Workers' comp on the highway side is typically much higher than workers' comp on the general government side due to the very nature of the task performed, of course. So again, I think that is just a matter of uh, booking those amounts to the proper department. Okay. Other questions? Nope. Seeing none. Sandra? All right, so we are, it seems that we are through the general fund budget and expense. So we can take a look at highway funds. And the highway uh, revenue lines are over their projection. Rather, my papers are out of order. And the highway expenses are under. And so what we have is, um, so what we have is an amount of money to the good. Now when we saw, looked at the general fund, we saw we were negative 36,000, but the highway fund has a plus of 290,000. So you will see there are a couple of payments that are going to come out, or at least one payment I believe will come out of that, and there will be wages that will uh, reduce that amount of money. We will also be rebooking insurance amounts that will affect that amount of money. There's also, uh, yeah. So that will change. That will, number will go down as we close in on the end of the fiscal year. And um, that will typically, it's in the practice of the select board that will be turned over, uh, booked over to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. Okay, I don't see any questions. <laughs> the, the page that follows the highway uh, summary is the due to from summary report. And that number at the very top, that $878,000 number, was the number we first saw on that balance sheet. Those are the list of reserves and 
committee or commission funds that have a claim on the amount of money in our checkbook. And you can go down and through this list and see what is in the town office reserve, what is in the town hall reserve, um, what's in the Curtis Pond Dam Reserve, the reappraisal fund, and so forth. You, you can see what we have there. You also see that highway number there, that $283,000 number. Now, by law, highway money and general government money are separate so that the highway never bails out the general fund in case that's a question that has popped into anyone's mind, <laughs> no. The general fund, however, has by law, by statute, has, is in the position of having to bail out the highway fund if it should go into the negative. It went into the negative last year, but because it is in the positive now, uh, that situation has rectified itself by itself. And uh, so the general fund is not going to be booking any money over to the highway fund this year. Um, what was I going to say about that? So, so, that, uh, so the highway fund and the general fund, even though uh, the town of Calus does not vote those two budgets separately, by statute, they are viewed as two separate groups of funds. Um, the administrative end of the town and then the very important road maintenance aspect of the town. And the reason they are segregated in that manner is because grants and state aid are generally driven by, how, by the highway budget and, uh, and the highway miles that uh, the uh, the town has and that must be maintained to a certain level. Any questions on that? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, we'll, we'll say this again and in all likelihood by the third time you will be bored. <laughs> and it will, it will sound very familiar and it will feel very comfortable. Um, but don't, you know, don't hesitate to ask any questions. Also, to understand and know that a budget is always a guide. So when a select board goes to the town and asks for a certain amount of money, it needs to show where they propose the budget what they, as a board, in good faith, think will be spent to administer the roads of the town, to administer the town offices and policies and so forth, as well as to maintain the roads. So it's all a guide. And sure, some lines are going to go under over the course of a fiscal year, and some lines are going to go over. And what you really hope, as a board, is that you, you get it pretty much in the ballpark. And if you have a nice uh, fund balance, which Calus does have at the moment, you, you're, you're going to be just fine. And you can weather that the year where, you know, there were expenses that were unforeseen. Okay, I think you have a question, Sandra. Sandra, you mentioned that the fund balance in the highway fund would go to the highway equipment fund, which according to the town report currently has a balance of about 20 grand. Um, <clears throat> what would that, roughly what would that bring the equipment fund uh, balance to? Um, can we take a look at that number? Well, what is it? Hang on, Scott, I just want to grab that. So the highway equipment fund is currently at $40,000 plus. 
and at about, uh, what do we have, 289. That 289 will probably go down to closer to 225. Uh, that would bring the highway equipment fund reserve to 265. Now, Scott, you should know that uh, according to the exiting road commissioner or the exited road commissioner, Rick Keen and Toby Talbot, and when he was here, uh, Alfred Larrabee, the town is in need of a new exit. And it looks like, uh, you know, that cost is going to hover somewhere around a million dollars. So the more money that the town has in that reserve fund to help offset that loan, the, the better the tax rate will be if, if you get my meaning there. Is, is the transfer of the balance from the highway fund to the equipment fund, is that statutory or is that discretionary <coughs> to the select board? Uh, that is, a, it, it can go two ways. In 2015, the town voted to create that highway fund and to move that money uh, if there was an excess of revenues over expenses into the highway capital equipment fund. There was a motion that was made, and I think you could read it either way. When I got into my position, it appeared to be the practice of the board for a couple of years after that uh, article was written to move that money from, uh, move the excess if there was one, into the capital equipment fund. Uh, what the board also did do, and I kind of figured this was their thinking, they did not budget for a capital equipment appropriation. For instance, a lot of towns will, as part of their highway budget, will say, you know, $40,000 a year goes into a capital equipment fund to, to offset equipment purchases. And that was not done in town. That it was done once in FY22, or maybe FY23, but it hasn't been done since that article was created. So I, and this was the practice at the time, and the uh, select board did not share their thinking on that with me. It, it was simply the practice. Oh, we lost you. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear right. me? Yep. 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 We're just fine. Some buzz. Yep. I think, are you done, Scott? Um, how much is enough in that fund? <laughs> in that fund, well, I think um, that is going to be a conversation between Toby Talbot and the select board from budget time. How much is enough regardless of what is in that fund? That, that highway excess of revenues over expenditures remains discretionary to the highway. So it doesn't come over into the general fund balance. But it's still under the, the town, select board. What, what the town could do, what the select board could do, is at town meeting time, they could make an article that says, if there's an excess, then that excess is split between the capital equipment fund and the highway fund down, such as what the general fund enjoys at this time. And so when the highway goes into the negative, the general fund would never have to cover for it. It, it didn't this year, just by good luck, but we wouldn't have to raise taxes to cover for a negative, um, a negative uh, a balance at the end of any particular fiscal year. So there are a couple of ways um, to handle that. In some towns, all of the money just simply goes into a highway uh, fund balance, and that's the fund that they use to uh, help purchase equipment. The big deal is getting all this equipment financed and, and 
setting up a finance scheme that doesn't disrupt the tax rate. Yes. Uh, too drastically. Mm -hmm. If you want your tax rate, theoretically, theoretically, the goal is to keep the tax rate as steady as possible with as small a bump up and as small a dip down as possible so people's lives are, um, so they can plan, so they can manage their finances around those property taxes. Well, let me, let me just say as a comment to the board that it used to be that the town voted at town meeting on new highway equipment acquisition. Um, and I think that was a good practice. Uh, suddenly spending a million dollars on a piece of equipment of which we've already got two is, seems to be excessive. But sorry, that's not directed at you, Sandra. <laughs> oh, no, well, that uh, is certainly not up to me. And I can tell you that uh, when we're talking a, m a number that large, <clears throat> that will go to a vote. Good. That won't be a five year loan. Yeah. Good. And that would be more like a 10 or 15, or maybe even a 20 year loan. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And uh, Sandra, to clarify, that's a, that's a threshold that's that's a, already established in statute. If there's, if the terms of a loan uh, exceed a, a five years, it automatically triggers a need for a vote. If, uh, well, almost. If uh, if a loan is, is taken for a term of one year or more, it requires a vote of the town. And this is how towns, uh, uh, frankly, are able to buy equipment on the run if a, if a truck goes bad and it's not repairable or the repair is not economical. They're able to lease. There's no uh, limitation on leasing to buy equipment, but a loan, um, there are limitations on that. A loan can be, be taken for a year or less without the vote of the town. But anything more than a year requires the town vote. So, uh, Scott, the town will get to weigh in on that excavator. Uh, if, if, if it really costs close to a million dollars, the town will be weighing in on that. Good, thanks. I think Rose, Rose, you had a question? Yeah, when Sandra um, gave us that presentation with the lady, Wendy from Nemrick, we talked about this. Um, in 2015, there was a motion at town meeting that said, um, so it was just a one-year thing. That's right. It was just a one-year thing. It was, yes. But the select board has continued to do it anyway. That's right. Yeah, you know about that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Other questions at this point? Okay. Are we moving on to the audit now, or do you have more on this one, Sandra? I think the, uh, that I don't have anything more to say about that audit at this time. I do want to talk to Sullivan and Powers about a couple of points, and until I do, I'm going to withhold my comments on that. Um, there's, there's one item on the audit that comes up repeatedly, and that is not going to be correctable, not by me, anyway. And um, we, we, can, we can talk about that in another session. It's, it's not anything that we're going to be able to resolve, but I do want to talk to them about it. I, I'm sorry, I meant to say the reconciliation. Did you want to talk about that? Oh, the, reconcili the bank reconciliations, all of the accounts uh, balanced. That's when she sends a reconciliation, every account balanced what went in and went out. It balanced with the, the our internal. Um, software. So we're good. Ah, that's this huge document you sent us. Okay, I see. That is, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you want to just explain about the East Calais Community Trust check then? Can I ask maybe one oh, wait, question? wait. Sorry, just, agenda? just a sec. Um, Jordan has a question. We want to go back. Sure. Um, this might just be like, a, maybe don't need to answer it now, but you know, I, as we've been kind of going through this report, um, what, what doesn't stand out to me uh, would be 
you know, what the mechanism is for, you know, identifying when we're getting close to needing to take corrective action relative to uh, budget overture, uh, overages. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way to generate this information in more of a forecasting format um, that's kind of projecting expected costs for the balance of the year. Uh, what, we, what I'm happy to do is to run off your period 12 balance, uh, rather uh, budget and expense statement from FY22, that's our last fiscal year, and FY21. And you can take a look at where we are um, what, uh, at that point in time. What, again, what I want to point out is, um, is that a municipal budget is not evenly spent over the course of 12 months. And when, you know, taxes come in, we, we look much brighter and more secure than we really are. It's illusory. And in the beginning of the year, we look much less secure. Again, it's illusory. So what I, I like to see that, that a good focus is on where we are in the year. Are we at, at in the, if we're at 75% of the year, are our expenditures roughly at 75%? And if they're not, why? And every one of these budget lines, Jordan, you can give a call to the office. I can produce for you every uh, detail, every uh, a detail of every transaction that was made in those uh, in any particular budget line for the entire year or for several years back. We hopped on to Nimrick in FY19, so that was July uh, 1, 2018. So we can go back that far in any budget line that you have an interest in, it really with a push of a button. All right. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd like to dig into that a little further, but um, that, we, we can do that, I think, separately. Um, but thank you, Sandra. I appreciate that. You're, you're welcome. Did that, did that help at all? It, it, it does, in part, yeah. Um, I, I guess I'm, the, where I'm coming from I, is a little less of, from the perspective of what's creating the overages. Um, and uh, so far, and our board's very limited experience, we've had to make uh, discretionary decisions about additional expenses that may or may not be associated or represented in the in the previous year's budget. And I and you know I think there's room for that type of investment in in the community, um, it, but. It, it would be helpful to kind of get a sense of how those uh, how those are going to impact expenses uh, through the rest of the year and um, and and have I, I guess a little bit more direction on um, whether or not some of those those decisions should get punted to another fiscal year or budget. Um, if we're running in a year where we've already seen a fairly significant amount of overages, um, so I'm not I'm not uh, weighing <laughs> weighing on any particular decision. I'm just um, uh, just kind of noodling around on on what could be developed as a res resource for putting eyes on unanticipated costs or even anticipated costs, but th that are somewhat discretionary for the balance of the year. That's a very thoughtful and probing uh, mindset, and it's valuable. This year, it, it, this is an unusual year because the expenditure side is top heavy. Your revenue side is, is on target. It's your expenditure side that is top heavy. And as I said, from that 20,000 foot view, I'm gonna 
I would wager that you're not going to see that same picture in FY24, although I don't honestly know what drove some uh, or a couple of, uh, at least one of those budget lines. I, I'm not quite sure what, what drove that budget line as high as it is. I, I, I can only look at the, you know, get a list of the checks that was written there. Um, again, the, the town is in a very secure position, even with the uh, expenses being what they are at this point in time and what we can roughly anticipate them to be. So you will dip into your general funds. There is no doubt about it. You're, you're going to. But it, it, there's a lot there to dip into. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to continue to uh, be secure. And if you have an idea of what the discretionary expenses are, perhaps we could get a list of them to take a look at it and, and, and see really where, where and how they may impact uh, where we land. I have a question about I that. Sandra, this is Gabrielle. Um, I have a question. When you say discretionary expenses, are you counting legal fees as discretionary expenses? I'm not exact. Well, I'm just using a Jordan term. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sandra. I'm using mediation techniques, is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> But so, I, I think I'm going to guess that Jordan has some other uh, discretionary expenses in mind, uh, or, or or I think he would identify the budget lines he wanted to talk about. <laughs> well, I, th yeah, I, there are. I, I would think that to a certain extent, legal fees would, and I think that those those would be one that I think the legal fees would be an example of uh, a current. Uh, budget balance that you know, a current balance that we would want to take a look at to see over the last year what has uh, contributed to those overages and decide um, what we might want to, what kind of policies uh, should be put into place to kind of weigh uh, which ones seem more discretionary than others. Certainly, I think everybody would agree that there are things in there that were unforeseen and somewhat out of our control. There are th situations that we're in that we have to continue to pay to get out of, but there may be others that were more discretionary and could have been uh, pushed to another year or tabled uh, in the event we were anticipating some very predictable uh, overages in that particular line item. But when I was referencing discretionary decisions in this particular conversation, I was thinking more about like the uh, uh, investments here in this building to make this a more usable space that things that I don't think we can necessarily delay much further because I think they will add some pretty significant in improvements and efficient uh, efficiencies to the operation of the town email systems being another one um, yeah. so uh, though those were kind of more the the discretionary decisions that um, uh, that, I, that I had in mind that uh, that aren't reflected necessarily in these numbers yet, um, but we know they will be uh, added. So I'm just trying to kind of suss through what the mechanism is for capturing those things um, uh, and, and maybe alerting uh, Sandra to those kinds of decisions that we, that we have and will continue to likely need to make um, so that we can have a a more informative or transparent forecast on on what our runway is, I guess, for the rest of the, the rest of the fiscal year. Um, sure. So we could, when you know the when when you know the as you say the legal expenses, some of which are unforeseen and some of which might uh, be able to be lessened with policy decisions over time. Um, but the, those two items, um, those, those two um, discretionary expenditures that you mentioned, if, if we could put a number on them, we, we, that, that's the information we really need. 
Mm-hmm. And you can send me those numbers anytime when you feel comfortable that you know what they are. And so all, all these invoices are, of course, on in files at the town office. So with a little bit of advance notice, if there's any line item in particular you're interested in, we can pull those invoices, make copies for you. You guys can study them. You can do it in the town office with the original files, or we can make copies for you. So just let us know. It just takes us a little while to pull them all together because they're not uh, filed alphabetically by vendor, they're filed by the date that the select board signed the board order, so it's a little chaotic. But I, I, I thought I understood Sandra to be saying she could do it with Nimerick with a report out of the all the stuff that generates all right, this. Right, we wouldn't like, study the line items of the invoices. Yeah. All the billing, all the billing and the, uh, what caused that billing. Check, you would know who a check was written to and the amount. But if you wanted to see the invoice behind that, then you need the original invoice. If you're talking legal fees, we'll get a so five-page invoice from the. Specifically about legal fees, we would have to. Um, we would be able to get those uh, invoices for you, uh, scan them, and you could review the invoices for this year from that law firm or law firms the case may be. Oh, by the way, that brings me to uh, the tax collection. Attorney is not paid by the town. The parcel owner pays the tax collection attorney those fees. So that is not a legal fee that you're going to see invoiced to the town. That's part of the tax collection process. Just as a PS. Understood. Keep looking for more free lawyers. Uh, <laughs> okay, Scott has another. Um, Sandra, oh, Scott has a question. Sure. Um, this is maybe too theoretical. Uh, is is there a could there be a mechanism? such that before an expense becomes a warrant, if it's somehow uh, out of the budget, uh, that the board would have an opportunity to decide whether to commit to that expense. Does that make any sense? If it is an unusual expense, Scott, uh, for instance, let's say purchases for the town hall, the board would have already decided what they were going to purchase. And they would have already decided what it was, or what course of action they were going to take to improve the sound, for instance. Yeah. And so the board would be investigating and making those decisions before they hit the town office. In other, I, I would be. They would tell, I would get a message from someone. This is what we're going to do, and you're going to get invoices from so and so. But but now, somebody could do incurred expense that the select board was not notified of, and an invoice comes in. The I think the process would be that if it's in accounts payable, Sandra would code it and pay it. It would come as a warrant to the select board, but we haven't mailed the check yet. And if the right. select board looks at it then and says, wait a minute, we didn't know this was coming. Who did this? Who authorized this? We're not going to sign this. We don't mail the check. And we would contact the vendor and, and, and challenge it. Is that correct, Sandra? That is exactly the way it works. No check Does that checks do not get released without prior select board approval and with the warrant comes the invoices there there's no mystery you know nothing is released without all supporting documentation um, being present for the select board and it would be a majority of the select board that would be three members at the very least would be reviewing every invoice before signing off on the warrant and allowing those checks to be mailed out. Good. But that's 
But that's still, that's happening after services are rendered, right? So it's a little late to be, yeah. you know, questioning the expense at the time that there's an invoice and a, uh, and a check needs to be written. I mean, we don't want a town with the reputation of making decisions and then deciding after the fact that, it, that maybe our budget's inflated. I, I think maybe we're, Scott was coming from there and where I was kind of working towards is, uh, we, and part of this is because this is, it. There's not, there isn't any continuity from the previous select board, so it's hard to uh, get an understanding of what, 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 the, what the budget items, what the individual budget lines um, were informed by and how many uh, of those that are coming under budget currently um, are expenses or projects or investments that haven't been made. Um, there, there's uh, a little bit of a opacity there to kind of overcome. Um, but I, maybe I, I can tell you, and you're not going to, it's going to sound glib, and I don't mean it to be glib, I mean it to be factual. This year, all expenditures. <laughs> are going to continue to put the town in a negative yeah at, at, a, at a negative number it's just the way it's going to be there are not enough remit, re, projected revenues to come in that are going to cover that so but that's not normally the case this is an app this year is an, appears to be an outlier uh, and this is what your this is a system condition that you inherited. You would not necessarily uh, this is an unusual year. No matter what you do, you're gonna go into the red this year. Just that's it. Yeah, that, that, thank you, uh, Sandra. I, do, I don't interpret uh, that as glib at all. I mean, and really, my questions weren't um, necessarily uh, associated with any action that needs to be, any course correction that needs to be taken in, uh, immediately. Um, it, it was more thinking about what the next year looks like and how expenses are, are managed through the next year um, as we continue to work through uh, investments in the town um, and, and the management of funds. So. Plenty of time to work through that conversation in the future. Yeah, I think the next year is going to be very different than this year, and you're going to feel much more comfortable with those conversations. This year's tricky. I mean, it, it just is. All right, Sandra, it's 8:30. Um, are there? Any, we have four items left. Is there anything you could do very fast? Uh, yeah, two things I could do very fast. Uh, I want the board to uh, be reminded that a large check will be on the next warrant for the 24th. The check will be drawn to the East Callis Community Trust in the amount of $238,000. Uh, that money will be deposited into the town's operating account on the 20th, specifically for the purpose of the draw to um, ECCT. So you will see that a check on the, um, on the warrant that night. And lastly, I have been in touch with Donna Fitch and Toby Talbot, as I said, regarding grants. And uh, all grants in play have been identified. Uh, and uh, we between the three of us, we have a very good handle on what is going on with them. There is one question about one non-highway grant, and uh, I believe Donna is exploring that with the grant administrator to see um, where he is with his uh, with the management of his deadlines. Otherwise, everything has been identified. Wonderful. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. All right. What what does everyone say? Do we stop here? They're just See. so close. We're we're so close, but the, the, the two items that are left are services you can provide, Sandra, 
and uh, discussion, potential discussion about a finance advisory committee. Do you guys want to go on and have those do that? Should, should we, we should at least have a preview synops synopsis. Okay. Think. Is that all right, Sandra? You mind? I, I didn't hear that. I'm very sorry. Uh, we, the consensus is we should go forward at least with a synopsis. Is that all right with you? Oh, yeah, sure. Would you mind uh, then talking about what services you can provide? So the services <laughs> that, that the board will require to make informed and meaningful decisions would uh, be a continuation of a monthly financial report very much along the lines of what um, Gwen Wilton has done. I, uh, annotated my, I, I do a little bit more annotation with mine. For instance, at the end of every report, I, I would make a note reminding the board not to release the Robinson Fund so that it's there in writing in your archive. Um, I can see, uh, based on Jordan's question, and what the board is um, looking at as projects, that there would be a weekly member with a, me a, a, a weekly meeting with a member of the board to address these questions as they arise and then to do the research associated with them to answer to answer questions such as what George poses. Uh, I would be providing or archival research with, to assist with your union negotiations. You may need to um, dig into payroll and benefit information that is available in the software and can be uh, derived in the form of a report. Uh, if, assuming you're going to do that bond, I would do your bond application for you. and. Um, and there, there have been a lot of conversations about the timing of that, so we don't really have to talk too much about that at this time. I would be advising the board of upcoming deadlines and cyclical events, for instance, setting the tax rate, budget development, the annual audit, and I would be assisting the select board to understand these tasks and to manage them going forward in the future. So for instance, you're going to set your tax rate, rate sometime on or before the first week of August. So early in July, I would be asking the board to, amongst themselves, begin to identify when they can meet to set that tax rate. That's typically a 45-minute meeting, maybe an hour. Uh, I will review with you the process, and you would get ahead of time, about a week ahead of time, uh, depending on where the list of progress is on that. Uh, you would get before the meeting a series of spreadsheets that would talk about each piece, uh, that, uh, each variable that goes into setting the tax rate, so you understand what makes your tax rate each year. Um, grant oversight. I thought Donna Fitz was going to do your grant oversight, but what she made me very clear to me, and I think maybe even at the end, is that she agreed to organize the grants, but she does not want to um, manage them. And uh, so what we have, and so Toby is managing the highway grants and doing it very nicely. Uh, the three grants in play right now are ARPA, and, and Gabrielle has that one, the ECCP grant, and Jeff Cantor is managing that one. And there is a uh, CLG history tour grant, and that's the one where some deadlines have passed that Donna is, has, is reaching out personally to see where we are with that. That really looks like the only grant that requires any kind of management or oversight that Donna would uh, extricate herself from and that I, I guess I would take that on going forward and, and seeing to it that that was taken care of. And then of course anything else that the board sees a need for temporarily or long range as part of the position.
Wonderful. That that uh, relieves a lot of anxiety. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, Scott. <laughs> I, Sandra, I, I assume you're keeping an eye on the on the federal funds and would let the board know if it's approaching the 750. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. What was that? The keeping an eye on the uh, federal funds that we accept. Uh, yes. To help us avoid the cliff of 750. Yes. Yeah. We're keeping a close eye on that. Great. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> yes, Charlotte. I, I just want to um, say that a little bit about what I observed, which is that after Sandra made an explanation, there really weren't many questions. And um, Sandra did a really lovely job of being clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're lucky that she can explain things in a way that leaves you with not very many questions. <laughs> well, that's good in that stand, Charlotte, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The questions are good. They really put a fine point on the discussion, but thank you so much. I really want to be clear as clear as possible. Yes, you are. Thank you, Sandra. Um, uh, so we've reached the end, uh, unless we could have a quick discussion about a finance advisory committee. Is the, am I right, Sandra? Yes, and I, I don't know too much about that, but I, uh, you did mention that early on when you approached me for this position, and I stand by my commitment to participate in that to help, uh, because I think it would be important for the town to have a finance committee. I personally... I think it would help. I, I'm actually not sure what it would do, but, the, but one of the people who approached me about it happens to be sitting in this meeting, so Charlotte. Why don't you talk to us about what you see a finance advisory committee doing? All right. So what we did tonight in this financial report was really look at how we're doing um, on uh, managing the town's finances. But we didn't talk at all about where these numbers came from. So for example, one of the biggest expenses of the town is salaries, though you don't know anything about how those salary numbers were determined, right? Because you didn't build the budget. Mm -hmm. So um, what a finance committee might do is uh, um, do some research, um, guide discussion about certain items that would help you make your decisions. So, for example, uh, when it comes to salaries, we might offer you some benchmarks, and then you can look at those benchmarks, decide if they make sense to you. Um, do you want to be on the upper or lower side? In other words, you get to decide where, what decisions you want to make, but how do you make those decisions? Don't you need a little information? Don't you need maybe a recommendation or two um, that might guide you in how you do that? So it's not in keeping track of what you've done, but in deciding how you want your numbers to look. And then as Jordan said, if you sort of assemble those decisions you make, uh, uh, what is the financial implication um, and what would that look like over, compounded over a few years? So if you decide, for example, you want to have all the town salaries be, say, 2% uh, uh, over the average, um, if you did that for three years in a row, what, you, what would your salary look like over, over time? And how would that affect your overall budget? So. Um, it, it's providing, a finance committee could provide you the basis for talking and making your own decisions. And would you be utilizing the treasurer's time to work those numbers up? Yep. Yep. Okay. 
because you don't make those decisions in a vacuum. Some of the things, uh, as you've already discovered, you don't have a lot of control over. But of course, the things that you do have control over, those are the important things, and those are the things that reflect your values, what's important to you. Questions? It sounds lovely. We are paying a premium right now for contractual treasurer. Um, and we just want to be mindful, like we do with our legal fees as well, mm -hmm. um, about not over allocating resource, you know, that we don't have to begin with. Um, this, uh, <laughs> an advisory committee would be townspeople if this is not paid. Oh, no, 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 what I'm saying, but if it's interacting with oh, Sandra, oh, we're yeah, paying yeah. a premium yeah, for it. She's already a part time yes. person. Correct. Correct. Um, yeah, no, you're right. That I, I very much like the idea of it. You know, I might lean towards waiting till we have an actual hired person um, who would be more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like a 30 mm -hmm. or 40 hour, whatever a treasurer looks like. <laughs> I think a lot of research could be done, though, even if you could yeah. settle on things, you could at least. Pull other towns and get other information. Oh, no, definitely. Yeah. But I would want to yeah, make sure we keep an eye on the fiscal part while mm -hmm. doing the fiscal part. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> other questions? Um, just comments, I, um, Charlotte. I think um, that makes a lot of, uh, makes a lot of sense. And, and uh, to Anne's point, I think, well, first of all, I think Sandra's got plenty of work to do to stay busy in the short term, trying to <laughs> keep us up to speed on how the current budget is, is tracking. But uh, to your point, I think there's, there's likely a couple of categories of uh, expenses and planning um, and uh, that I think a, a finance committee could, uh, could really help inform. And part of them are going to be kind of the inflationary uh, forecasting that you would have relative to salaries, uh, salaries, those are somewhat known entities that are, are pretty easy to project. Uh, others are um, anticipated investments in projects or uh, improvements to town infrastructure that may be a little bit more discretionary um, and would inform maybe the budgetary process for for the next year, and I think a lot of that could probably be done without without Sandra's support. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I think what would be helpful would be to visit what the scope of that committee would be and, and what the um, kind of feedback loop looks like uh, for, uh, for the board um, so that we can kind of think through what would be helpful for this board. Um, in, in preparing for the budgeting process of next year um, and then start establishing kind of a pattern of a working relationship with the committee um, before we start to populate one <laughs> and, and send, it, send it out into the wild uh, to, to start putting together recommendations and pulling in resources. I don't, I don't know if you've even talked among yourselves about what experience you have with budgeting and forecasting and whether you, you know, if some of you already, um, that's something that you have. Uh, done a lot of so. We have not talked about ourselves. Did you have a question, Jamie? Uh, I was just going to say <clears throat> this likely ties into a conversation I've had fairly extensively with both Toby and Rick about capital improvement plans oh, and is, looking at long term forecasting really on equipment uh, and buildings yeah. and when's this going to need a roof yeah. and sort of yeah. tying in all those pieces would be really Rick important. Is really good at that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could see having a capital improvement committee. Like that is mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. we should probably have a capital plan. Mm -hmm. Right. And, right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think we do. Well, anyway. Um, we yeah. do? Mm, You're sort, right. of. sort of, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, so you're seeing that as different? I was going to ask the same question. Would that, this committee work on capital planning? Right. Uh, you know, to some extent, the committee is what you want it to do. What, what kind of support do you think you need? Uh, what kind of um, areas do you want more information on or some recommendations uh, from, you know? So, uh, so primarily you'd be responsive to 
what yeah. we ask you to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but also, you know, if this is your first round of budgeting coming up, um, what might some of your parameters be? Um, what are going to be the real key variables? Um, how are you going to approach those? That kind of thing. Rose, you had I was just going to say that um, <clears throat> there are uh, resources at EL yes. ELTC. Yes. Um, extensive resources. They have, I, I can remember from my time on the select board, um, we were able to compare. Um, you, and because we're a participating town and we pay into that or whatever, you can access the whole salary for the whole state of Vermont, mm -hmm. like for the highway department and see. Um, and you can also compare it by towns our size and population and um, so on and so forth. So there's some really good resources that the info is out there. Um, and then again, when we were going through the union negotiations, um, again, we compared unionized road crews like in Roxbury and Northfield and some other towns. So again, you can compare. So there's a lot of information out there. And the board does have an education and training budget line. <laughs> and lo and behold, almost none of it was used. <laughs> So how would you structure such a committee? Would you want it to be two people, or, or would you envision 10 people with subcommittees? Oh, 10 is a lot, isn't it? So, um, I'm not sure. Smaller. What kind of expertise would you look for? Well, uh, we have some terrific expertise among our um, uh, the the uh, town, oh gosh, what are they called? Um, they mostly do the cemetery fund at the moment, but the, oh, the, the, the the trustees trustees of public, public funds. funds. But there's some fabulous people there, and they have a lot of really good experience. And if we drew them in for other purposes, I think they would be a fabulous resource. And they're not a whole lot. And, and they all live in Calais. And they all live in Calais. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and so does, um, oh gosh, I'm getting so bad at names. Uh, you know, when, um, when we, we do our um, appraisal, uh, the uh, reappraisal re for the whole town. Christine Chamberlain? No, not Christine. Yeah. Cloud, Cloud filter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yes. Cloud filter. Uh, yes. Uh, what a fabulous resource he is. He is so busy. I almost hate to ask him, but he's. He would be happy to help, uh, give us um, some some advice. Present, you know, when is an appropriate time to ask him and to ask him what? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, he's a terrific resource. Well, and I think to your uh, to your point of, of pulling in someone like Rick, who has a, a, a firm grasp oh, on gosh. projects and um, deferred maintenance projects, yeah. and it kind of to again to the selfishly to the root of my comments earlier, it's like what are the discretionary decisions that we know that we can make? What are the deferred maintenance projects that we want to uh, inf put in to inform the budget and make sure that we're trying to save for those improvements, but may be able to have the discretionary decision making space to, to say we can put this off another yeah. year or we can't because something came up. And, and right now, I don't think we have enough eyes on what all of those different things are across all of the asset pools in uh, uh, in the town, you know, whether it be equipment, uh, replacement planning, um, deferred maintenance on facilities. Um, that's a whole pool of things that uh, that needs to have yeah. eyeballs on it, aside yeah. from just kind of financial planning. Just, just a reminder, Sandra's still on the phone. Yep. She is a wealth oh, of yes. information. Any of those kinds of questions, Jordan, that you ask such good coaching questions, Get them to Sandra. She mm. can really fill you in, not with knowledge and uh, documentation. I, I do want to say one thing, and probably I can be off, and that is with regard to capital planning. Toby Talbot does have a capital plan that he will be forwarding uh, for equipment replacement that he will be forwarding to the select board. 
and he looks forward to a conversation with this select board to talk about that and develop it further. I spoke with him on Thursday. Uh, specifically about the capital plan, he wants to talk it, to us? It's a capital plan for highway equipment. Okay, oh, for highway equipment, yeah. okay. All right, so that's on a future agenda. Okay. Um, should we let Sandra go and we can maybe continue for another minute? Sure. Unless, Sandra, you want to be part of this conversation. No, I think that you are uh, brainstorming, and uh, I think it's, it's good that you do that, and you can do that without me. <laughs> I think we can. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Sandra. That was excellent. Thanks very much. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Be careful of the mud. <laughs> good night. Good night. Um, so maybe we should try to get something in writing, of, you know, a, some kind of a description of what this committee would do. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe it'd be wise, since we're all talking about capital stuff and deferred maintenance, to see what Toby has first. Because I would, I mean, I, like, I, immediately when you were talking about salaries, my mind did go to, I'm sure that stuff is out there. And I am also, like Ann Tulin said, very protective of Sandra's time because she's part-time mm -hmm. at a pretty, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at a contractor rate, to put it um, discreetly. So, um, yeah, so I, I think we just really need to be aware of that and we need to have a discreet, um, useful task for you in mind to be able to properly utilize the... Um, the intelligence and enthusiasm and engagement that you're willing to bring for the town, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, but we just have to figure out what it is first. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have Toby come present, if Rick would be willing to join him, that would be really helpful. Um, yeah. uh, the, the town has bought a lot of used equipment in the past, and it hasn't always been a good choice, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, it might be nice to have more than one point of view. I recall buying new equipment not used. Yeah. The wood chipper was the yes. thing, but other than that, but the prices are just astronomical. Mm -hmm. I got a million dollars for an excavator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I guess we're going to continue to have this discussion. <laughs> so. Um, oh, you can talk about what a, a finance committee would do without ever talking about numbers. Ever talking about numbers? Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think it would be a, a pretty helpful exercise. I like kind of collaborating on the scopes of those things uh, before kind of setting setting folks out with a task. I, I think if you wanted to um, to very broadly just quickly outline what the scope of work would be, and then we can have another conversation uh, to add to that and, and start making lists of deliverable items or, or, or who put, starting to put names on, on who, who would be participating, on those, uh, participating in those conversations so that we can form, form a group. Uh, and so primarily Perfect. on the budget building side, not the keeping track of side, because mm. Sandy's really good at that. Correct. So would you be willing to do that then and come back yeah, to us yeah, in a yeah. couple of weeks? Sure. Um, maybe a, um, just a draft that you would yeah. um, add or subtract from and, and that would just get you thinking? Yes. That yeah, would be, exactly. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. So we'll be in touch. <laughs> okay. uh, is there anything else? I think we made it to the end of the agenda. <laughs> okay, then I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.